Hello, everyone. My name is Ariella Wagner. I'm the founder of Sunray Construction Solutions. We help thousands of general contractors, subcontractors, and suppliers secure their lien and bond claim rights through our awesome software. Today, we have a really important topic that sometimes is taboo, and a lot of people are very nervous to discuss it, but Things happen in business, and that's why the laws are written to help you. So today, um, we have the fabulous Jordan Rappaport, who is, specializes in bankruptcy, to discuss the topic of saving your business through bankruptcy. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Rappaport. Good morning, and thank you for the nice introduction, Ariella. Um, my name is Jordan Rappaport. I am, uh, a bankruptcy attorney. I specialize in bankruptcy. That is all I do. To, to give you the 30 second rundown on me, I've been practicing solely bankruptcy for over 25 years. I handle all sorts of bankruptcies, not just reorganizations, but uh, chapter sevens, 11s, 13s, 12s, appeals, credit of work, debt of work, tax discharge, anything uh, related or even semi related to bankruptcy. My goal when somebody comes to my office is to uh, assess the financial difficulties that are facing either individuals or corporations and help them solve that. Sometimes the solution to that problem is through bankruptcy. And we're gonna be focusing this morning a bit on how bankruptcy uh, can save your business. Uh, there's oftentimes a misconception that bankruptcy is the end of the road and that if a corporation files bankruptcy, it is essentially um, failing or closing down when um, that is far from the truth in, in most cases. Uh, I have personally helped reorganize many, many businesses, saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars and in certain cases, millions of dollars. And those businesses uh, reorganized and are operating today stronger and better than before. Than before. Uh, the United States government and the US code allow bankruptcy uh, and it would be um, it would be unwise for a business owner to not um, to not look into all options when faced with financial difficulties. Um, today's agenda, we're going to be going over basically six different aspects of, of how bankruptcy can save your business. First of all, we're going to be discussing um, financial issues that could impact your business, that are impacting your business, and why those those factors should be a, a, a red light in your head or a, a signal for you to, to evaluate your position and potentially talk with a bankruptcy professional uh, like myself. Um, I always tell people that um, talk is free. We can talk all we want and we can go through the problems. It, it makes sense for people to explore their options because information is power in today's society. Then we're gonna talk about the difference between reorganization versus liquidation. Um, are you intending on continuing to operate your company or are you finding a way or, or, or trying to find uh, the most advantageous way to liquidate your company? Because it's not simply closing up shop. There are different ways to liquidate companies that may benefit you as a business owner. It's not simply closing up shop. We need to dispel that rumor. Uh, next, we're gonna talk specifically about real estate reorganizations. Um, specific to companies that own real estate or sell real estate. Uh, next, we'll talk about funding companies. Uh, a lot of small businesses uh, use funding companies to help them over the hump, um, um, companies such as Cabbage, and those companies uh, uh, can hurt as much as they help, and we need to focus on them for just one minute and how bankruptcy can help you escape their, um, their, uh, their, their clutches, for, for lack of better words. Um, Next, we're going to talk about unsecured debt, ways to deal with that in bankruptcy. And lastly, we're going to be addressing different types of businesses because some businesses can obtain greater results in bankruptcy than others. But it's worth it to explore um, bankruptcy for all businesses if, in fact, uh, you're faced with uh, mounting financial difficulties. <clears throat> so let's, let's, let's talk about for a second some of the fi common financial issues that impact the business. Uh, most, depending upon the type of business, whether you're a contractor or a, a pizza shop owner, um, you have to deal with, with cash flow. 
cash flow is a relatively simple uh, concept. Money in, expenses, money out. Sometimes you may uh, encounter something that is blocking or preventing the cash flow from coming through, wherein you know you have enough money to pay the expenses, but it, it just, things got delayed or a project took longer or business was off one month, but you know it'll be um, uh, better the next month. I recently had a, a company, they, they own a, a restaurant in South Florida, and they said that June was a particularly bad month because it, for some reason it rained every weekend and that affected their cash flow. So when, when your cash flow is affected, you can see some of the bills piling up. Um, and if it picks up the next month, maybe you can uh, meet, meet those expenses. But sometimes you encounter an insurmountable wall and you just need breathing room. You need something to protect you from the, the creditors who are coming after you that month, for instance, a, a landlord. Um, Accounts receivable fall into the same category as, as cash flow because you may be building up a tremendous amount of accounts receivable, but unless you can collect those accounts receivable, some of the of the bills may begin to pick up. Bankruptcy can stop those creditors from coming after the business and harassing you, and in some cases, offsetting those debts against an existing bank account. A per perfect example is where you have a uh, line of credit with a financial institution and as part as the uh, as part of the agreement with the financial institution if you miss your payment they can automatically debit your corporate account well that may pose a problem because that takes the control out of your hands and they may take the money at an inopportune time you may find yourself bouncing checks that should be a humongous red flag that you may need to consult with a professional because it creates a downward spiral um, of a more immediate and, and obvious concern is, is eviction. I have had uh, numerous businesses uh, consult with me wherein, uh, wherein they, they tell me that during COVID and while it's still going on, um, when the mandates were, were, were out there and people were not leaving their house, landlords were, were giving them um, opportunity, were, were giving them extra time to pay uh, their rent or maybe even for giving a few months but now that the mandates are gone and people are going out more the landlords want that money back and if the business does not have the ability to pay they will file an eviction proceeding now evictions are extremely extremely dangerous to an uh, ongoing and operating business especially a restaurant or a retail establishment and it's important to know that if if in fact you get an eviction notice you cannot wait till the last minute eviction notices happen and, and eviction proceedings are extremely fast and extremely aggressive and if a writ of possession is issued that means that it dispossesses you of possession of of your establishment and bankruptcy in that case will not help so if if the word eviction ever comes up or you're you ever get a notice of default and a 10-day notice that should be probably one of the largest red flags Last is a, a, a lawsuits. Um, sometimes uh, a business is, is operating perfectly and you have a, either an old client or a customer or um, somebody slips and falls and files a lawsuit against your company. Sometimes the cost of defending a lawsuit is, is just as great as what people are alleging. And especially if there are various lawsuits, bankruptcy may be an option. Once again, you should, you should uh, speak with a, a bankruptcy professional to establish whether or not uh, it's more economical to maybe reorganize your business and deal with those lawsuits. A perfect example is um, is I once represented a a a um, a, a contractor who who was being sued by a variety of subs, like more than three, and the cost of defending the lawsuits, uh, even if they won, was so astronomical that we reorganized the business and offered those creditors pennies in a dollar. It, it, it is a viable option and it is something that, that it's worth looking into. <clears throat> now, when I talk about a, a, a bankruptcy of business, there's essentially two types. There's reorganization and liquidation. The, the, the terminology is a chapter 11, which is a reorg, and a chapter seven, which is essentially a liquidation, i.e. closing the door. Um, each of these obviously are, are, are clearly different. Um, chapter 11 is where you continue to operate the business, and these are traditionally more expensive 
uh, type cases. Um, however, they can uh, if the business is a viable business and is facing one or two obstacles, it it may be uh, depending upon the amount of debt and the amount that can be saved, it may be worth looking into. Um, I recently had a case where I had a, a distributor of, of, um, of auto parts uh, and they had more than $4 million worth of debt. We were able to reorganize this business, keep it operating. It, it never closed down, even during the pandemic. Uh, and we saved them over three and a half million dollars. And the business is still operating today. It it was definitely a wise decision in that case to, to, uh, to reorganize. And the business is much stronger and has much better financials now. And uh, in fact, didn't lose one employee. They actually hired additional employees. It was a, 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 a great success, um, but it took a lot of work and it was, it was worth it. I've had other businesses where the business is no longer viable um, for a variety of reasons, but there's still inventory and assets. Um, a chapter seven liquidation or even a chapter 11 liquidation may benefit the, the owner of of that company in that when when assets are liquidated it, they can go towards paying either uh personal uh, personal lines of credit that the um that have that have been uh co that where the business is a co-obligor or by paying sales tax or other tax that the business uh, hasn't paid in which the owner is personally liable for it's important to understand that that there are a lot of debts that businesses incur wherein the principal is is jointly liable on sales tax, payroll tax being the, the 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 most obvious. I've had companies file bankruptcy solely to help uh, the the principal pr uh, protect themselves from either sales tax issues or payroll tax issues. And in some cases, uh, sales tax owed to the state, if it's not dealt with immediately, can become criminal. So so it's certainly an important thing to look into. So it's not just closing the doors and walking away. There may be a more strategic way to address that. Um, real estate re reorganizations. Um, there are a lot of uh, single asset LC LLCs or single asset real estate cases that, that come across my desk. Um, somebody may have created a corporation and invested in one piece of property or multiple pieces of property. Um, I've had people uh, consult with me who bought a, a small, a rental rental building, maybe it's 10 units, and they know there's equity in there. They maybe put a lot of money in to fix it up, uh, but they just need more time to sell. The lenders, uh, um, I'm trying to foreclose. There might be a sale date set, and there's equity in the property. They just need that time. Uh, I've had friends who have invested in single-family homes and fallen into the same predicament. They just need time. They own a piece of real estate. There's equity there, but they just need a little more time. Well, in in that case, um, filing bankruptcy is 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 extremely uh, useful. In that, immediately upon the filing of bankruptcy, an automatic stay is is created, which stops the foreclosure in its tracks. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, once once the foreclosure is stopped and the, the company's in a in a uh, bankruptcy, they uh, in many cases will be able to to propose a plan which has enough time to either auction off the property or just allow them additional time to market and sell the property. The, the key there though is that that this, this additional time comes with a, a, a small price tag in that you have to pay the creditor what's called adequate protection. What does that mean? That means uh, a perfect example is let's assume you're behind um, $60,000 to, to, uh, um, to, to your lender. Uh, but your monthly rent payment or, or mortgage payment rather is $5,000. Well, if I put you in bankruptcy, um, you don't have to come up with a $60,000 at once. Obviously, that's the reason you're filing bankruptcy, but you will have to pay on a going forward basis that $5,000 a month. But think of it this way. That may make perfect sense. You, you, you dug yourself a small hole, but you know there's equity above what's owed the lender and they're pushing you forward. They're applying pressure with a foreclosure action and you file bankruptcy and you pay them what's called the adequate protection for more than a few months. I, I've been in cases where it's gone on for a year. And during that time, you can market and sell the property while you're under the protection of bankruptcy. And when the property sells, the lender gets paid in full and the profit, whatever profit there is, will go into your pocket. That's the reason we're filing bankruptcy. Without filing bankruptcy, that foreclosure will go through and all the equity will disappear. Um, 
the one additional benefit sometimes in filing, say, a Chapter 11 bankruptcy is you can uh, sell a piece of property free and clear of liens under 11 U.S.C. Section 363. What does that mean in English? That means if you have a, a piece of property that's worth $4 million, but there's $6 million of debt on it, well, how are you going to sell it? Well, it's, you can't pay $6 million on a $4 million asset. In bankruptcy, though, you can arrange the sale so that it does get sold for, let's assume it gets sold for $5 million, and then you, you use the bankruptcy to, to deal with the other million dollars worth of debt. The benefit of this, because maybe at first it doesn't sound, well, how is it helping me? Well, it is helping you because by selling it for $5 million over a, a, a planned sale, a marketing um, marketing over time versus a fire sale, you will get more value. So in, in that sort of instance with a 363 sale, you're minimizing your loss. It's, it's better to have to deal with, let's say, a million dollar debt than a three million dollar debt. Uh, 363 sales are used quite extensively in, in multi-million dollar bankruptcies all the time when a real estate project goes underwater. Uh, I've seen uh, hotels that were being uh, 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 fixed up and repaired, wherein the the, the debt on the, uh, the the hotel could be tens of millions of dollars more than a property is worth because of a variety of conditions, and that property then is is sold through what's called a 363 sale in a bankruptcy. It's a very powerful uh, feature of bankruptcy. It's used in many many multi million and sometimes multi billion dollar uh, uh, real estate transactions. And there are significant benefits uh, if you know what to look for. So just because you have a project that is completely underwater, it, it doesn't mean that there, there isn't a way to maybe still maximize the value of, of the asset versus throwing up your hands and, and letting it go through on a, a fire sale value. So let's talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, funding companies and mom and pop stores. I cannot tell you how many times I have had just, you know, small businesses, pizza, pizza joints, small retail places. Um, I had a Greek restaurant one time could come to see me wherein they, they were awash in funding money. What, what does that mean? Um, my business as well as everyone's business gets inundated with these, with these uh, um, offers for quick cash for your business. Um, we'll, we'll give you $60,000 within 48 hours. Um, um, the, these companies and, and Cabbage is the Cabbage and On Deck are the two that, 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 that pop up uh, um, most frequently. But there's a lot of companies out there, even hard money lenders. And what they do is they'll lend you the money, but they need to, before they lend you the money, they want to make sure there's a large stream of income going through, let's say, a credit card machine. So picture a, a, a pizza joint where in the, 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 the 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 business makes twenty thousand dollars a month on their through the, they process twenty thousand dollars a month through their credit card system. Funding company says, "Hey, I'll give you a quick fifty thousand dollars, but you're going to pay me back through your credit card system. I'm going to get paid first. So what that means when they get paid first, that means that that when that money comes through your credit card processor, they take that money right off the top. You don't have a choice." on whether or not you're gonna pay them, it's coming in, they're getting paid first before anyone. That's the condition they're gonna give you for loaning them money. So I've had businesses come to me where, where instead of making, let's say a three or four or $5,000 a month payment, they're making three or four $5,000 a week payment, it's coming straight off their gross income. So if, if they wanna miss a payment on one month, they can't. So these funding companies step to the front of everything uh, and of all the debts. And sometimes they become, uh, they take so much of your gross income that you're unable to pay any other expenses. In those cases, bankruptcy is extremely useful. Many times there, there is no, there are no assets by which the funding company can secure their debt, which means that if a bankruptcy is filed, they have to stop attaching your credit card receivables. They fall into an unsecured category. That is a tremendous advantage in bankruptcy. I cannot tell you how many times I've saved businesses and conversely seen businesses fail because of uh, those funding companies. If you are a small business and you have a lot of those type of debts, 
you should run. Don't walk, run to find a bankruptcy professional like myself because we will be able to help you save a tremendous amount of money and potentially uh, uh, reorganize and save your, your business. Um, it, you need to stop the bleeding. These funding companies will bleed you dry and you need to, you need to be aware that this easy money comes with many, many strings. Now, uh, unsecured debt. Look, let's assume that you just have a business and you have a lot of vendors and you just had a streak of of of, of bad luck or bad business or you're not getting paid in receivables and you have a lot of unsecured debt. Well, uh, bankruptcy will stop any collection efforts from all that unsecured debt and allow you to reorganize and potentially pay pennies on the dollar. Now, it's important to understand that a lot of small businesses are financed by their owner's credit cards. I can't tell you how many times I've seen, uh, let's say, a Mr. Irwin Smith come in. They have a a, a business in, in, in the mall. They they have a boutique or something. When I ask them what the business debt is, they'll say $100,000. Yet when I look at the actual paperwork, the credit cards are not in the name of the company. They're in the name of the individuals, the owners. And, of course, the first thing they say is, well, that's business debt. I want to get rid of it through a business bankruptcy. It's not how it works. If the unsecured debt is in the name of the principal, then filing filing a bankruptcy for the corporation will not help it. We need to look at a potential personal bankruptcy or at least see who is a co-obligor on that debt. Um, so it's important you know, to understand that while bankruptcy can allow a corporation to get rid of those debts and reorganize those debts, heck, I've seen a, a restaurants with a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of unsecured debt be able to get rid of it through a reorganization. If an owner or principal of the company or a member of the LLC is also uh, liable or, or a co-obligor, uh, then we need to expand what we're looking at and, and maybe consider a personal bankruptcy too. But it's not our focus today, but it's it's important to 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 um to to understand that. Um, um, but businesses can get rid of a substantial amount of unsecured debt. Unsecured debt all gets grouped together, and and in many cases especially through what's called the new subchapter five, you may be able to, to push through a, a plan where you're paying pennies on a dollar, five or 6% sometimes. Um, you may, may be able to push it through without the, the creditors even having a vote. So it's definitely definitely something important important to, uh, to, to look at. Now let's, let's talk about um, just the advantages of, or the examples of a few different types of businesses. Um, I've mentioned a few times a, a small restaurant. I, I've mentioned that more than a few times because, it, you know, small restaurants, um, um, mom and pop restaurants, they form the backbone of, of most cities' uh, uh, collection of restaurants. I can't tell you how many restaurants in my area in Boca Raton are 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 owned by by you know, um, um, they're owned by individuals. They're they're not chains. They're not big corporations. They're just a um, a, a, a person who wants to start a small restaurant and 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 invest a lot of money and a lot of sometimes their own uh, personal exempt assets they might put their life savings in it well because a restaurant because they're seasonal and because of covid a lot of those restaurants are hurting right now um, um it's been all all over the news everyone's aware of that um sometimes these restaurants have gotten ppp loans and maybe that has helped prop them up for a bit but it's we're we're getting into the home stretch now and there is no more uh ppp loans well those companies may benefit uh, extensively from potentially reorganizing under what's called a sub five or a standard chapter 11. Uh, they may they may have a tremendous amount of unsecured debt. Heck, a lot of them are in debt to landlords and those landlords are now knocking on their doors. Well, now's the time to explore the options before an eviction is filed, before you get too far behind the eight ball or before the landlord starts uh, not cooperating. Um, as I said, it's I, I see a tidal wave of, of of landlord evictions coming up because uh, they've been waiting well over a year in some cases, in some cases offering reduced rent or putting rent in the back. And if they're not getting paid now, they're gonna pull that trigger. I, I've seen it happen just even a few days ago. Um, it's important that the small businesses, especially the small restaurants, um, um, look at their their bottom line and and explore all the options because there may be ways to negotiate uh, with a landlord through bankruptcy, maybe finding a, a, a better a space that's a little bit cheaper. There may be a variety of options that need to be explored. 
Um, <clears throat> next is a general contractor. Um, I, I've seen a lot of a lot of cases filed over the past couple of years over um, um, uh, people hire general contractors, they get in disputes, overage charges, change charges, and next thing you know, the the, the GC is in a in a two hundred thousand dollar lawsuit all, 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 regarding a home they built two years ago. I, I've seen it happen, and I've seen companies spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, on attorneys fighting the lawsuit when they could, probably could have spent fifty percent or even less of that, uh, just reorganizing the, the business through bankruptcy. There's there's a variety of, of ways to solve those problems. Uh, and if you're faced, if you're served with a lawsuit, um, it behooves you to speak with whatever attorney you're gonna hire to defend the lawsuit and figure out what the cost is and, and maybe explore options of resolving it that don't involve chance. Here's what I mean. When, whenever a general contractor is sued, there's a chance to win a case and there's a chance to lose a case. But I guarantee you, win or lose, they're going to incur attorney's fees. Uh, when you explore bankruptcy, it's not about winning or losing that case. It's irrelevant. It's about analyzing whether there's any exposure to the company and then resolving the issues without having to incur unnecessary attorney's fees and without having to gamble on either a judge or a jury making a decision. In bankruptcy, it's it's much more black and white, and and we don't we don't gamble on whether somebody's going to win a lawsuit or lose a lawsuit. It's all about dollars and cents, and sometimes it's extremely advantageous to view things from that perspective. Um, sitting down with somebody like myself, there's no downside to talk about those options. Um, a, a moving company. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had uh, uh, various moving companies come to see me where they're being sued by, for, for small amounts, um, there, but multiple lawsuits of, 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 of customers that were upset or pissed off for, for one reason or another, and they, they spend tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars over the span of a year or two, resolving those issues um, and, and having to go to court. Well, if a company's being sued, such as a moving company, over and over again, there may be a way to, to draw a line in the sand and reorganize that business such that all those issues are resolved at once. Bankruptcy excels at helping businesses solve multiple problems in one central forum. Instead of having to fight 10 battles with 10 uh, different cases, even if you have just one or two attorneys, you can solve all those problems um, at once. L lastly, an individual, individual doing business and a person name. So, that's more of a, a misnomer. What what happens is is that a lot of times um, individuals will conduct business as a DBA, which means that they they don't actually have the protections of a corporate entity. The reason why people set up businesses or LLCs or sub S's or C corps is to shield themselves personally from corporate liability. Sometimes the corporations are 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 not active. Uh, sometimes you just operate as a DBA. Sometimes you just set up a company, you call yourself something else. We are actually operating in your own name. In those particular cases, um, we 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 can still examine bankruptcy options, but you predominantly be looking at a personal bankruptcy. So that really sums up all the different um, options. And mind you, when I say sum up, I mean it's a general characterization of how bankruptcy can help. If somebody has a specific issue uh, or specific problem, you should obviously consult with a, 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 an experienced bankruptcy professional like myself, because as I always say, there's a lot of ways to solve problems. And information is power. You should get that information and then make an educated decision. Thank you. But wonderful, Jordan. Thank you so much. And for the people that attended this webinar, um, if it's a, a specific question that you have, there is a chat box on the right. You do not have to give your name, um, preferably actually not your name and not your company's name. Um, this is a superb time. And while we do that, um, Jordan, maybe if you can go to the last slide, which has your contact details and my contact details, um, you can go skip all of that. Um, what I'd like you, if you have any questions, um, we, our contact details are right here. And again, as I said before, um, there's a lot of people out there that still consider bankruptcy um, taboo and, and you're frightened and you don't wanna discuss these topics with anybody, but 
this might be your 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 way out of a of an emotionally distressful situation and it doesn't mean it's a bad thing it could be very very helpful to you your company and your family so if anyone has any questions feel free to um again send us an email or you can ask right now we'll wait a few minutes um if anyone has any questions but again great job jordan and um Looks like everyone, uh, if they have a question, they might reach out to you or me directly. Um, fabulous job. Thank you so very much. And, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak, Ariel. I, I, I do uh, appreciate it. Oh, thank you for being so incredible and explaining things in such a manner that people can actually understand. Sometimes you're right. It could be the laws can be very, they could be in like a different language, even though it's an English language. So you make it very easy to understand. So thank you. Well, thank you so um i think that's that so if anyone has any questions we are absolutely here for you um i wish you all a, a sunny and happy day <laughs>